Ladies and gentlemen, unless you have been living under a rock, you would have seen the European record being annihilated by Jakob Ingebrigtsen. This race was the Diamond League Monaco race, and it was one of the fastest races I've watched in the history of this sport. You know what was so good about this race? These two guys at the front here, the guy in the pink and the guy in the red and white, a huge shout out to both of these guys because they were actually the pacers during this 1500 meter record attempt. This has made me think that Jakob is now going to really win gold at the Olympics in Paris. Later on in today's video, we're going to be going on the details of the start list for the Olympic 1500 meter, including who has been entered and who is representing the likes of Team GB, Team Kenya, Team USA, Team Norway, and every other country competing in the Olympics. This race I watched by Jakob Ingebrigtsen was unbelievable. Now bear in mind guys, Jakob has just had a baby daughter, so he is now a father and has a much more stressful lifestyle as a result. His wife is taking care of his family and his daughter so well that he is still able to train very well. The runners who were pacing Jakob were Sisk and Ruddle. Both of these guys were really, really strong athletes and they were doing a great job of trying to keep Jakob on pace for that European record. Notice Timothy Chariot here on the left of the image. He could not keep up with Jakob Ingebrigtsen, as you're about to see in the latest stages of this race. He was dropped behind, and this is just a great example of how quick Jakob is now, like what kind of shape he's in. So the pace set is not is called Rudolf. Sorry, Rudolf. I apologize. I miss uh, I miss saw the name on his bib. So at this point in the race, he went through the 400 meters in 55 seconds. That's extremely fast. We'll wait and see what they go through the 800 meters in. Some of you may have seen this race, some of you may not have. I'm going to do a quick reaction to what actually happens here. Then we're going to be getting into the start list for the Olympic 1500 meters. And we're going to be going over some other things that Jakob has had happened to him in his life over the past few months. Rudolf and Sisk were doing a great job around the 500 meter mark. They were pacing Jakob to a time around 328 to 329. However, they did not expect him to finish with such a fast last lap. 1 minute and 50.6 for the 800 meter. Notice how Timothy Chariot is right behind him, basically tracking his every move. Now at 800, Rudolf stepped out into lane 2 and moved aside, leaving Sisk to be the leader of this race as the final pacemaker remaining. This is when a tiny gap started to form between Jakob and Timothy, and this is when I saw the weakness showing in Timothy. Timothy was really struggling to keep that gap from opening anymore, and the problem here was Sisk was doing such a great job of pacing that Jakob was just going with him every single step of the way. Once Sisk dropped out of the race and stepped aside, it was around 3 minutes into the race, Jakob had already established around a 5-7 to seven meter lead on the 2nd and 3rd place athletes. At this point, he simply had to hold it together and run the last 250 meters as strongly as possible. And oh boy, did he hold it together and run the fastest time a European runner has ever run in history. This next shot shows the sheer extent of his lead. And don't forget guys, a 1500 meter race, having anything more than a 10 meter lead is absolutely huge, especially at a diamond league level, which is the world's greatest runners in their given discipline. Jakob had a 10 to 15 meter gap between himself and the other athletes, which to me just shows the dominance he had. If he's able to make Timothy Chariot look a lot slower, then I have a feeling that he's going to push Josh Kerr to his absolute limit. Finished this race in a crazy time of 3 minutes and 26 seconds, 0.73. That was a new European record for Jakob, breaking his own record from, I believe, a year or two ago. That was absolutely unexpected, unbelievable, and astonishing. 
So you're probably wondering, who did Jakob send this warning to? Well, he's not done yet. He has the Olympics left and he has trained very hard for it. Here are some of the competitors he will be up against. This is on the IAAF website. These are the selected runners for each country for the 1500 meter race. As you can see the name on the left, then the discipline, then we have the date of birth and the country. Timothy Cherit obviously was the huge eye-catching name I saw first, second on this list. Then we have uh, Vincent of Team USA. We also have Petro Arese of Italy. We have uh, another chariot also of Kenya. Uh, this one is Kip Career, so not Timothy Chariot. That's uh, Kip Career Reynold Chariot, uh, born in 2004. So very young athlete there, very, very young athlete. We also have an Irish runner now the name of Andrew. So let's scroll down a bit and see some of the other athletes we've got in this field. You can see that we have uh, some other athletes for Ireland, Cathal Doyle. We also have Anas Esail of uh, Morocco. Then we have a German runner, Rube Robert. Then we have a couple of Ethiopian runners, two Spanish runners. I believe, Ad I think that Michelle is in this race, I do believe. Here you can also see Elliot Giles of Team GB. He is one of the, the fastest uh, British runners this year for the 1500 meter. He seems to be in very good shape, so I'm excited to see what he'll do in the likes of the heat and the semi-finals. We also have Neil Gawley of Team GB as well. Neil is a, uh, what I would call a veteran. He's been around for quite a while now. I think he is in his late 20s, possibly just approaching his 30s, his early 30s. So he's done a great job at staying injury free. He's got a lot of experience as well. I recognize that name. I used to hear it many years ago. And of course, the big boy, the goat of the 1500 meter, Jakob Ingebrigtsen. And as if the IAAF have been a bit cheeky here, putting Josh Kerr directly underneath Jakob Ingebrigtsen, saying that these two will be very, very close together. As you can see in the date of birth section, Jakob is around about two and a half to three years younger than Josh Kerr. However, I don't think that really plays a factor in the race that is going to be taking place. Brian Coleman of Kenya. We also have Abel of Kenya too. We have uh, Luke McCain of Ireland. Stuart McSwain as well. That's a big name. A lot of you will recognize. McSwain's a very, very fast athlete. A quite a tall athlete as well for a middle distance runner, standing at around six foot two, I believe, or six foot one. We also have Adele Michel of Spain, and he is uh, the veteran in this race. 1990, he was born. So, you know, this is a guy in his 30s, and he's been around for a very, very long time. Osama Meselic of Italy is also in this race. But to me, I have to say that the highlight of the race is, of course, going to be Timothy Chariot. Josh Kerr and Jakob Ingebrigtsen. These are the three athletes that I think will get gold, silver and bronze. Big shout out to George Mills as well, Team GB. He has also been selected for this race to represent the country. Congratulations to him. So here are our last few of the entrants for the 1500 meters. A lot of these names won't make it through to the final or the semi-final because the heats will probably be very competitive. I have a feeling that the heats will actually be extremely fast because of how high standard the race is. We've also got Samuel Tefera there. Don't forget him, guys. Uh, I believe he broke the former indoor world record. It was either the 15 or the mile. Crazy. Uh, he, he reminds me of, uh, I've forgotten who it is, but when uh, Samuel Tefera runs, he runs with his mouth shut. He looks like he's barely trying. I remember when I first saw him break the world record, I thought, oh my goodness me, this guy, uh, this guy's a robot. <laughs> he's so strong at running. He's so... Uh, classy he's got such a really rhythmic style and very relaxed facial expression Jakob Ingerichsen has just sent a warning out to the whole world of the 1500 meter Olympic scene he's basically said that okay if you want to run fast I can do that as well don't forget that Jakob Ingerichsen also has an extremely fast finishing kick but so does Josh Kerr Timothy Chariot doesn't have the best kick in my opinion I think he's more of a Kind of go hard from the gun type of guy he likes to run hard from the start and timothy's always the type of athlete who will go for fast times no matter what the race so i feel like timothy won't have an issue with qualifying 
The problem is if all three of these athletes are in the same heat, that's when there's a problem. Hopefully the heats are nice and distributed in standards. I would be disappointed to see someone have to run like a crazy fast time just to get into the final or the semi-final because then that means it ruins everyone's races and it kind of messes up the selection process. So let's hope that they all get their own separate heat and that the semi-finals are also rather balanced. Otherwise, we might not see a great final and they could all end up just destroying themselves and burning out because of a semi-final race uh, and it being so difficult just to qualify. So I think that we're looking at a Jakob Ingeriksen gold after that European record. I have to say that I wasn't thinking that before though, because don't you guys remember when Josh Kerr defeated Jakob Ingebrigtsen by running a crazy fast time in the, I think it was the mile race, and it was very, very fast in America. He showed him up, he, you know, he beat him, he defeated him, and he did it really well. It was fair and square, and he took it out very hard, and he kept going all the way through to the finish line, and won in a very, very impressive time. I think that some of these guys are going to have to rethink their tactics against Jakub because going out hard isn't going to work anymore unless they really also are in world record shape. We could potentially see an Olympic record at this Paris Olympics 1500m final. I reckon we will. Now I am going to be reacting to that race in a live stream on my channel. So if you want to see that, make sure you click subscribe to my channel and leave a like on today's video to show your support. Here in this channel, I intend to cover the 5,000, the 10,000, the 1,500 meter, the 800, and of course, the marathon with Kipchoge, Bekele, and Sese Lemma. I've got my work cut out, so I'm going to basically be spending my time live streaming every day, all day for about three or four weeks. But hey ho, I enjoy it and I like supporting you guys and bringing you content that you want to watch, so I'll do it. And all I ask in return is to click the like button and uh, comment down below support or questions. And of course, subscribe if you're new. It's going to be a very, very busy time for me over the next few months, but especially the next few weeks as we enter into the Olympics. I've got access to the timetable. I've got access to the elite start fields and all that. And I'll update you if there's any more breaking news regarding any of the events. Don't forget the 5 and 10,000 will also be crazy. We've got Joshua Cheptegei, Jacob Kiblima, Yomif Kajelcha, uh, Arigawe. There are so many big names, I, <laughs> I just can't believe it. I thought that last year, last Olympics was big. Well, this one makes the last one look like a park run. So, yeah, Jack Jakob Ingebrigtsen has been training extremely hard to retain his Olympic title. And it's going to take a miracle for Josh Kerr to take it off him. Although I really support Josh and he is my home athlete from Team GB, I do believe that Jakob will be unbeatable in this race because he will know exactly how to run championships. Let's be real, Jakob is a championship runner just like Mo Farah and as well he is also a record runner. So either way, they're going to have their work cut out and I can't see any of the teams working together to defeat him because they're just not fast enough. The only two that are fast enough are Timothy Chariot and and uh, Josh Kerr. I think there's no one else that will come close to Jakob Ingerichsen. Thank you for watching today's video. I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's upload. Things are getting exciting.